Welcome to this video on leavening agents. What is a leavening agent? Well, simply this. A leavening agent is something that makes baked products rise. When baked goods rise, they become lighter and less dense. There are three typical leavening agents used in your kitchen. One of them is air. Air is used to make foods light and fluffy as well as steam and carbon dioxide gas. They are the most common bubbles that are trapped in batters and doughs to make quick breads, cakes, and yeast breads rise. Let's look at air first. Air is whipped egg whites or whipped into cream to make it light and fluffy. When a lemon meringue pie, for example, is made, the meringue is whipped or the whipped egg whites become the meringue. It is topped on the pie and then when the egg whites cook in the oven they cook into a foam that will hold its shape. An example of a product that is risen by steam are popovers and cream puffs. These have a very wet batter. When you cook it, it becomes a light, airy product that is actually almost hollow inside. This hollow shell becomes the container for a very rich filling. Next, carbon dioxide is our next gas that is used to rise baked goods. Baking soda, baking powder, and yeast are the three most common products that are used to produce carbon dioxide bubbles in baked goods. Baking soda and baking powder both must be activated. Baking soda has to have an acid in order for the baking soda to form the CO2 gas. An example of an acid that might be used to a baked good would be lemon juice, orange juice, or cream of tartar. With baking powder, you can use any liquid and it will bubble up. Examples are just water or milk. Here is a short demonstration showing what happens when baking soda and baking powder and an acid are added. Hi, this is a quick demo to see what happens when you add baking soda and baking powder to just plain water. We have here two cups full of, uh, two measuring cups with one cup of just plain water in it. I am going to put baking powder, one teaspoon of baking powder in this cup of water and see what happens. You can see that it gets all foamy and the uh, bubbles will be giving off carbon dioxide gas. In this cup, I'm going to put a teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda doesn't look like it's doing anything. All right, that is because any liquid, including just plain water, will activate baking powder but baking soda needs an acid in which to activate. This is lemon juice. I'm going to go ahead and put a teaspoon of lemon juice and add that to my container with the baking soda and let's see what happens. Put a little more. Ah, there we go. A little bit more and we got some action there. So when you add the le ah, there we go, nice and foamy. When you add an acid to baking soda, then it is activated, where the baking powder will be activated with just plain water. Thanks for watching. We will use all of these in our labs. Both baking soda and baking powder are commonly used in quick breads. Here is an example. As you can see, these muffins have had baking powder added to the batter and then rise very quickly in the oven.
Yeast breads, on the other hand, use yeast. It must have, yeast is a living plant that must have very specific conditions to grow. As it, as it grows, it gives off carbon dioxide gas. It must be warm, it must be wet, and the yeast has to have some food to grow, just like people. When you mix up a yeast dough, usually you add your yeast to a small amount of your flour, add some warm water or milk, and a little bit of sugar for the food for the yeast. 120 to 130 degrees is the exact right temperature for the warm water or milk when you add it to the active dry yeast. Yeast breads take longer to make. They have to rise twice. Usually they will be rising before you even shape the dough and then again after the dough is shaped. Once it's shaped, you put it in the oven for baking and it will rise a little more as well as get nice and brown. Here is a clip. I hope you now know more about leavening agents and I thank you for watching.